good morning youtubers after all today we are going to basically you know uh, read out the rolls royce a 2010 rolls royce with um you know we purchased a new icon next you know from ecs tuning and we're gonna try to um read out the vehicle data today all right but firstly you go here click on the the, the settings range and in client settings usually it usually be checked here for bmw and you will see the color to turn to blue see that bluish greenish okay for bmw mini if you select it it will have its own color and so on let me show you see it becomes something like orange when you select rose rice here to read or rose rice now you have to select rose rice and then you click it and it changes to its own color yellow so what we do now we click on operations here read out vehicle data then we go down here to continue or go forward and it's going to find the ip address and the icon with the number and so on and so forth and then we go forward you know and um, we're going to try to go forward and read out the vehicle um, id which i'll be to the top left there of the screen under vehicle details here it goes series is rose rice development code rr4 and the sales designation is rose rice coast and the gearbox is auto and we can see at the top right here kl15 just simply mean clamp 15 which means record the voltage of the ignition when it is on and KL30 would be clamp 30, which would be 15. Um, we need 15 volts, but above 13, you know, because this is the alternator range on battery B plus side. And this is also battery terminal 30. Whenever the car engine is running, you know, the alternator will reflect the same voltage on terminal 15 as it does on 30, and so on. And um, KL15, if, if anyone did not know, you know, the Germans use 30 as a word. Or as a number to show folks that um, you know it's just a number that they use to say okay this clamp name this number but if it's if it, because it is unswitched if it is switched they call it half of the number you know so they call it kill 15 clamp 15 just simply mean it's a switch uh, battery B plus okay we are ready the car so what we're gonna do right now we're going to try to say read up the uh, special file codes and we display in the fall codes here we have basically five fall codes you said wheel detection not possible and wheel electronic front left no reception wheel electronics front right no reception wheel electronics rear left no reception and wheel electronics rear right no reception the reason for this can be caused by the wheel speed sensors needed to be changed i know that on this car the left side the left rear at, um, you know, it kind of tilt, um, it go, it, it kind of go, it dip low because the strut needed to, to needed to be changed and so on. So we know that that has to be replaced on this car, and then now eventually they will know that they will find these file codes and they're gonna use ISTA D to read it out. The next time they're gonna do that job, and so on, and they will now see that the wheel speed sensors are um, not working. Let us go in back in uh, say vehicle information here. And then we go say, let us click on RDC. Yeah, we look at the RDC here. We can see the address is the communication of the module is on address 20. And the group type is RDC, SRRR underscore VR. And it's, um, so you know, the name tire pressure monitoring, the variant is RDC underscore zero one. And then we can see that there's no part number there. There, are, there is no hardware number either. But what BMW people did, they just simply use a serial number to identify it as an assembly number. You know, so that's what they did. And all of those, the three coordinates is showing you two of twelve. So two of twelve is these files right here that say HWEL bootloader software flash file. These are the twelve of them all together with the CFD file, the coding file that is actually running the car right now in terms of the RDC module, you know, and so on and so forth. All right, let us go in say the uh, the DSC right. Uh, let me see. On certain BMW, like the e-chassis, some of the DSC control units, they basically, um, we, we do now, we call up the ECU function by clicking on it and highlighting it. It will turn to grayish with outline of green border. And then we click on call up ECU function at the bottom left, which will be the second top to the right. And what we do now, we're going to try to do a little bi-directional control and so on and so forth. And as you can see, the, the production date of this car release, I think it's May 20th, 2010, and so on. And um, it's communicating on the bus. The DSC unit is communicating over the flex ray bus, and so on and so forth. And um, you know, let us look well. The wheel speed sensors are here. That meaning, if the car was up on a hoist, 
I would have go out there and spin the wheels and then now we understand that we could be able to um, what we do now we click on that and then we click read state and now uh, well I could move the car but I don't want to really take a risk with customer car and it gets screwed so since the car is not under my um, responsibility I'm not going to create a problem for anyone so what I do I'm not going to move this car just to generate a real speed signal so what I'm going to do I'm going to turn off the state and I'm going to go back and I'm going to um uh well the brake the brake pressure sensor what I can do I can turn on this one I can turn this one on and I can free read state it's still one it's negative one for one bar but if I should press the brake like I did now it show for it increase the bars by you know so many so you know it's at 35 something 34 something so I ease up of the brake and then it goes back to um negative so okay so that it works by directional control works or by directional reading I should say Bi-directional control will be going component triggering, you know, and the pump motor here, well, we ain't going to do anything with that one because it's a DSC we're dealing with now, we don't want to be like, you know, you see, not many much features are here for the DSC. Okay, what I was going to show you, you know, guys, I just click on SZL here, you know, and then we click on call up ECU function there. What we're going to do now is to look for the steering angle sensor. I know it's already calibrated on this car, but so far, so good, we're going to go here and we're going to look at the steering angle uh well we have three of them steering, steering angle speed and steering angle volume so we're going to click on three of them and we're going to now reach the state okay the car is right now you know the, well the steering wheel is it is to the right 18 degrees negative to the right so therefore if i try to straighten it like this yes i want to put it exactly at zero yeah exactly that okay 0 0.01 whenever you're going to calibrate the steering angle sensor you guys you have to come here and then put the steering exactly straight at 0, 0.0 whatever the other number is it doesn't matter that number at the um at the end is immaterial long well some people do it with a negative number but what i do now i use my wisdom i kind of use my wisdom and I, I i i make sure i center the steering properly and then i have it at zero whatever like that or I can have it like that, or I can have it like positive like that. Okay? They give a tolerance of, of, of plus one degree or minus one degree, and it's in the tolerance of that, then, you know, the software will know that, okay, it still can align the steering angle center for you and do a calibration and so on and so forth, you know? Well, let us wrap it all the way in to the right and bucket, and it shows negative 558 point whatever degrees to the right. So let us do the thing. You know, they do the same thing or hold it. So when you're calibrating the steering, it's gonna tell you to do this, lock it full, lock to the right, it record the end stops, and then you lock it full, um, full lock to the left, and it record the end stops, and then you store those in the SZL and it bring it back to the center. And then we go like this. Okay, sorry, I have to go back the other way. Yeah, I have to put it back to the uh yeah, that is it right there. Oops, 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 oops. The steering is um Yeah, that is okay. Yes, a negative number is okay as long as it's zero point something. And I usually touch it back a little bit to the left. And um, yeah, that is usually where I left it. You know, and I don't have anybody in the car to touch it whenever I'm gonna do whatever. So to say, learning in, learning in the steering um, in stock values and so on. Okay, since it's at zero point four degrees, usually we turn off the state here, turn it off because once you click it, it's at on state or turn it off and we go all the way back here. What we do now we close out this one here and then you know we go to say vehicle management okay i'm not gonna actually calibrate the steering angle sensor but what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna show persons of procedure you go and click on service function i'm gonna show the steps to do it and so on and so forth we go in chassis here chassis and suspension and then we go in um well steering angle sensor here's it right here we click on it you see this thing is tricky you see, it says it highlight this like this, and you click the button at the bottom to do it. Hmm? Though the button is not being seen, it's at the bottom being hiding, you know. Maybe the resolution on this laptop need to, needed to be adjusted and so on. Or the DPI setting need to set at 100% in order for us to incorporate all the four edges of the software mask screen to be factored into the laptop and so on. You see, it's very tricky, people. Whenever you put the, whenever you use a cursor to I, or highlight the ABL, the ABL mean procedure, the procedure will start so therefore it will now 
you know, begin the process. So you can turn back. Yeah, good morning until again. You com- um, accomplish it. Uh, you know? YouTubers. So, you know, don't click on the button. The that they again, continue at the bottom right of the Easter D's because um, it will start the process. Went wrong so what I do here, I just do this for tutorial purposes. And then, you know, I do, I just basically go custom scaling. You know, I don't mess around with the software. I just click on the other button. It's here to shoot the laptop so we can see all the buttons on the bottom left. Let me see if I can, you know, pause this video and let me see if I can, you know, increase the screen resolution. Okay, Easter D's running and then, you know, we're going to read out the 2010 Rolls Royce again and then we're going to show uh, and go in the deep yeah, set it there and um, come out with a better resolution where the screen edges are um, incorporated. Okay, we proceed. Okay, okay first of all, in the gray here, we can double click on it just to maximize it up on the screen and pull and it up. Look like this is at the highest setting. Now, is. So what we, we do click now, on we PCI, you know, the range settings the right there, and then like this one here that says advanced. And like I showed you before, people, you know, you can. We now have to click on this one here that says use this space. You select BMW here and you click OK. Oh, it will change the the, 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 the color. Yes, it's at 150 right now. Like greenish okay. light. So, so what we do now, kind of a kind of a look like the greenish blue. I don't know what kind of a color that really, really, really is. So well, let's suppose that we're going to find another item green. Out, you know, we basically we select. It should be going Mini, down. But I don't know what color it's like. That for so orange. And then we go back here. Let's say, uh, let's go back here. A BMW i vehicle. We have to click on the electric vehicle. It gave us fully blue. Let's go here now. And then we go back here. And we check out the bike. Okay, oh, where's well, the other one of that is like really. EKW, maybe, I don't know. I never worked on the bikes before. It still remain blue. Let us see. So what we did now, we go back to Rose Rice and then we uh, have to click on, um, the, the, and then what we do now, scaling. we um, set a custom scaling. And see, it's at one sure we can so we're going to put it on 100%. And then just we're going to make the character of the network that we're on is a local ear network. So that we can now have, because we're actually using the Ethernet port like, but in this case, this laptop does not have an Ethernet port. So what we do now, we basically buy a USB to Ethernet converter, we install the drivers for it, and we are ready to go. So what we do, click on read out here, we click on the bottom, there come the vehicle identification. Then we go forward, we locate what, it, oh, it's reserved. In this case, when it is reserved, what we do, we unplug the icon from the car like this, and it will go away. We remove the electrons from it. We remove, um, you know, we remove the electrons from the icon, and there goes it go away. And then once we remove the electrons from it, we plug it back, it removed the reserve status, and in so doing, over time, you know, within 30 seconds or so, you know, when the icon land and the icon is set and system is um, set as well, you will see it show up right here in Connection Manager, Mr. D. So let us see the process. Because all the time I make a video about this, the D, you know, different cars, you know, and whenever people have an icon reserve, whenever I show them what they should do to, 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 um, to undo the reserve, you know, and there goes the free now, so we will click on it, highlight it. We set up connection. We're ready to roll. Huh? It's gonna read out vehicle ID. There it goes. It picks out up here. Terminal, you know, 30, which is battery B plus. And then now KL15, which will be terminal 15. The KL stands for CLAM. CLAM 15 is just a switch, a switched um circuit, which is to say turn the ignition on. So that is why I think the Germans give it 15, which is half of 30. 30 is directly connected to battery, which is unswitched, you know? So for persons who never know what KL mean, now you know today what KL mean, clamp 15 and clamp 30. Well, well, well. It's gonna do some, you know, read up background context and so on. So uh, let us pause the video for now, cause I probably have two or three minutes done already. Okay, it's finished. Okay, you remember what I was saying to you? Let us click on the SDL. Read the, 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 you know, what I was saying to you. Click on the SDL if you want to see what, the, um, you know, the steering angle sensor values are. And then they click on call up ECU functions at the bottom left. You know? And then we go to diagnosis scan. And as we can see here, we can see, um, in the SDL here, we can see uh, what steering angle sensor is. So what we do now, we um, turn on that one, that one, all three of them. And then we um, we actually go here. And you can see the steering was at zero, you know? And then that's it. It's at zero. So what we're going to do now, what I'm trying to show persons here, first of all, when you're going to do a steering angle calibration, you guys, you need to go in the SZL, in the Rolls Royce. You click on SZL after you just replace an SZL switch cluster here in that part of the steering. Good. You go into the, you know, click on the SZL. 
the ECU control unit for it. Then you click on call up ECU function. Then you go here. Then you set the steering wheel exactly to 0, 0.00. Okay. And then since it's like that, you know, we turn off read state and we make sure that is where it's at. And we check again. We don't make nobody touch the steering or move it because the steering is perfectly straight. And it has to be straight in order for us to make that kind of um, steering angle calibration and so on. So, uh, okay, well, the steering angle value is basically 0.62 degrees, okay? So let us put it a little bit to the zero. Yes, that is okay. Because sometimes when I'm gonna do the calibration, I make it 0, 0.0. It doesn't matter if you have a, have a, you know, a kind of a county number at the right of a zero, you know? As long as it's 0, 0.0 for me. And that's what I do, so I do I, what I do, I turn out the state. And then I click close. And what I do, I just click on uh, say uh, vehicle management. And then we go to service function. And then we go and chassis and suspension. And then we look for the, the, the entry for steering on the sensor. And um, yep, we go there. Okay, you see this right here, this is called ABL, the procedure, okay? If we click on that, we highlight it. You see once we click display, it's gonna activate the procedure. It's gonna call up a kind of a test plan like to say create the, the, the beginning sequence of you know creating the calibration process. You know, you do not click on display if you're not gonna do it. On this car, the steering angle sensor is already set from the factory. So we never really replaced the SDL. So what we're gonna do now is just for tutorial purposes. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go forward, you know, by going backwards, you know? And then we go back. Oh wait, well, let me show you something here, guys. Filters. Filters I'll show you here. These are those basically these legends. FTD simply mean vehicle technical diagnosis. KFA mean function changes to the vehicle. And SIT means service information technology. MSM mean mobile service and so on. Usually you can uncheck that. I usually never need that one. SSP, I need it. You know, the wire diagram, that's what it means, you know? And then ABL, as you can see before, like I told you, it means procedure. And FUB simply mean functional description. It tells you on the right hand side of the software when you're running a test plan, it tells you how the system designed to work with that particular module and in, in their particular circuits and so on. All right. And it shows you what other control unit is in line in, in the circuit working with it. So that's what the functional description, um, you know, you know, it, it really here to guide you to, to fix whatever fall code you get, because according to the fall code, they create a test plan and so on. We do the functional description on the right you won't be able to use the ABL procedure on the left, okay, when you're in a test plan. So therefore, guys, I just hope you, um, you know, get this in your head. FEB simply means fault elimination, and overview is simply mean, you know, roughly overview. And then, you know, REH simply mean, you know, repair instructions and connector view. I like to enable this function because I like to see the connectors and so on and so forth. And technical data, that's one thing. Installation location, EDO, and then SPI would be vehicle software information and so on. And then pin assignment is one. I need to have that turn on when I'm doing my test plan. Tightening torques, I can need it if I'm going to do certain things that require delicate torquing, like some small, you know, small torque amount. And so you don't want to over tighten stuff and pop the bolt or crack the surface or something. And then there's an S, you know, SWZ special tool. I uncheck that because I really don't need that. You know, REP simply means repair instructions and SBS simply means operating flow. So what I do, I just click accept and save what I have edited there. And what I did now, I just basically click back on troubleshooting. Okay, all right. In this area, whenever we have fault codes, like we have it right here, what we do, we click on calculate test plan, okay? At the bottom right, and it actually pull up a test plan and so on. Over here, we have roughly under the column of priority, it shows your priority one going all the way down. But as the priority increase in number, it shows you that the priority is much more urgent on those which are, uh, you know, of a higher number. So the, the, the Germans do it on their car. Okay, since it's already clicked on RDC wheel detection, we now are going to click on display because usually when you click on ABL there, it's gonna highlight it in yellow and then it highlight the display button to be come from gray to black. So therefore we go forward and um, it's gonna create two off in the screen here. It's gonna create over the other side, a functional description like it is there now and the wire diagram over the right. And over the left is going to show you the procedure of the uh, the process, and so on and so forth. He said, following fall code data are stored for the tested function component group. Wheel detection not possible. So what we do here, guys, we can click over this here. Once you click here in the mouse here like that, you can click on. Um, we can go forward and click continue. 
okay? But usually, it now switches over to functional description, which would be that. Wire diagram would be this. Usually, we click in the area and click on full screen to view the wire diagram in full, you know, overview screen across the laptop screen. And what we do now to come out of that, we click back full screen and it goes back to the same to our screen, you know what I mean? He said, wheel recognition not possible. The control unit cannot learn the vehicle's, you know, wheels, electronic wheels modules within a driving time of six minutes and so on. So if the car is driving within a time of six minutes and the computer does not detect the wheel speed input, you know, it's going to generate these codes and so on. And this is have to be rectified. So, you know, let us go on the wire diagram and make forth a tutorial for other people to learn and so on. Let us show you something about German, you know, concept of engineering and in terms of their wire diagram and so on and so forth. Okay, okay. This little I, this little I here, the letter I here. If you click on that, it will bring up something. It will tell you the fundamental definitions for a diagnosis documents. Okay, so if you want to understand what they mean by functional wiring diagram, you will see it right here highlighted like that. Okay. Usually, you know, we can print the whole thing. We just click in the area. Just make sure you double click in the area and so on. You know, and then you click. If you want to print document, you just send a print command. And then you print document, and then you print. Um, it's gonna. You it should. You should. It should. It should spool up. Yeah. This is. This is what I'm saying. It should spool up Microsoft Print to PDF because I kind of set the default printer to print the PDF and so on. So what I do when I'm working on a BMW or say a Rolls Royce or a Mini, I have a project doing for myself. What I do, everyone, I basically go in my documents folder and I created a new folder for the chassis I'm working on, and then basically put. I turn on my cap locks and I call this one. A, say you know 2010 Rolls Royce and I basically type in uh, the RR4 which is the, um, the, um, the, the type and then what we do now we create VIN and then we do now we type in in uppercase now the VIN number the last seven digits of it will be UX you know 48953 so what I do that's how I organize my folder structure when I'm working on a car that means say you know if I'm going to store wire diagrams, I store them here, okay? So in this case, you know the wire diagram, I, um, wire diagram for uh, wheel speed center. That's what I do, you know? And I make an organization of my work, that's how I do it, and what I do now, I also can click in this area and I can highlight it and I can select all and I also can print this and I also can send a command to my word uh, document where is word here's my word right here I can you know I can you know open this up and I can basically um, you know control V is space and there goes we paste the information and we can increase the size of it on the screen so that our viewers can see much more clearly and so on and so forth so what I did when I'm working on a car here I just basically you know, store these information in PDF and so on and so forth, you know, just in case if I might need them, if I'm working on a car and I do not have to run over the test plan by which these documents will be called up in the software. So that is my little wisdom of how I structure my stuff, you know, if I want to retain back. Okay, as people can see here, here's a legend, okay, in terms of the color code, this is what I want to show others. You see, German are kind of funny. All right, you see, RS, pink, it just showing you that, well, RS mean pink. This right here, the legend, you will see it on the wire diagram as RS and so on. Let us show it you here on the study platform. Let us look for it. Let us click on this and maximize it. Let us go on full screen. All right, let us look at, let's see if we can zoom in here and then we can look up for a, a color code that have to do with RS. That is if any is found here. In these wire diagrams here, you know, it said brown right here. It will be that brown, it dominates the entire wire body. And then now the OR would be orange stripe will be there to identify that wire with brown and so on. And as you can see that this brown, it goes to a uh, terminal 31, which would be ground. And it is protected by a resistor inside the board of the tire pressure control. Well, we know it's a tire pressure control because it says right here where the cursor is at, A66. And if we click on that hyperlink, it will bring up the location of where this control unit is in the car. And as we can see, we click on the picture and it maximizes it across the screen like that. And then it is saying that it is in the back underneath, you know, somewhere in, in the in the in the mat in there where underneath, you know, a little bit where you find the spare tire and so on. So that is where it's located and so on. Okay, so we click okay, we close that one up. 
And then we can also look at pin assignments. And these are the pin assignments here. Usually, I usually save my pin assignment by clicking the area and click on full screen. And then what I did now, I just click the print function here. And I said print document. I don't want the screenshot, I want the whole document. So what I do now, I just basically press OK. And this is a printed PDF. Yes, it comes up with it. And then, um, you know, it's going to come up. And what I do now, see that? It defaults back to the 2010 Rolls Royce RR VIN folder, which I saved. And what I'm going to go, I'm going to call this one now um, the connector view. Connector view um, for the tire pressure sensor. For a tire, a tire, oopsie. Pressure sensor. Okay, we click enter, we'll save it. What we do now, we can also can click on component description. And I think we had saved a copy of this component description before. And what we do, we can go over here, scroll down. Oh, I did not save this one. So let me save this one. Component. This one is tire pressure monitor. Let us call it that. I did not save this one. You know, um, let us uh, save this one. And then we can... Um, go forward with what I'm trying to show others. So we will call this one functional description. For, you know, tire uh, pressure monitor, you know? And then we click on, yeah, okay, we'll save it. All right, now we think we have seen installation location already and there it is. So we know that these are they that come up on the right as FUB, pin assignments, and so on, because I turned on the filters for them earlier on, okay? We click on full screen to bring it back to wire diagram. We click in the wire diagram here, and then we click back on full screen to maximize the wire diagram across the screen. And then, you know, like I was saying, you know, I was teaching other people, you know, what the color codes are reflecting, you know. See, GN now in green, like right here, and then the blue, simply meaning that the BL mean blue, it has the wire green is identified with a blue stripe and so on, you know? As you can see, you know, you know, that, you know, this wire right here, it will be, you know, towards the plus side of the transmitter for the front left, you know, and um, it goes to a, it goes to the, uh, a, it goes through a resistor and then it connects to a transistor, which is a driver for this transmitter. And in so doing now, the control unit now, you know, in, when it ready, it pulls on the base, which is this right here, which is the cursor. The emitter is connected to the ground, and then the collector is connected as an output because of all the electrons are flowing through the circuit. You know, the electrons flow from the negative side of the battery, and it goes all the way up through the transistor, and it comes all the way down. Whenever the base is pulsed, it causes electromagnetic change inside of the silicon chip of the, that make up the transistor inside of the, you know, the substance that make it up, you know? And then it creates electromagnetic... Um, polarity and then it allows electrons to stream across inside of it and then it allows it to be collected through this resistor uh, the resistor is basically to protect the transistor inside the board and then this it goes up through this wire and then it supplies whatever the voltage is for this and so on and so forth okay and as you can see it's rdc here with a vl plus meaning that it's a plus wire that connects to the plus side of the battery all electrons that stream right through they go back to the plus side of the battery and in so doing it keep the battery replenished and it's good to have the alternator running when you're doing diagnosis or you have a battery maintainer on a car and so on and so forth okay and um you know as we can see if we click on a6 here the hyperlink it will tell us where the front left of the transmitter is located on the car as you can see a clear picture is here showing us where it's located you see right up in there you know and so on and so forth all right so you know we close that and then um we click back on the right diagram side, you click in the, you click in the white area, and then we click on full screen, we get it back to the max across the screen and so on. In order for us to zoom in some more, you know, we just click on zoom in. And there goes, it maximizes up the wire diagram into much more higher resolution and um, you know in much more much more you know text and graphic legibility where we can actually see what we can see in terms of the characters, you know, and so on and so forth. Always remember people, whenever you see number 31. In the BMW wire diagram circuit, it simply means it's terminal or clamp 31 for ground, okay? And then now 30 would be positive, you know, and so on.
Okay, so um, you know, let us show other people some other stuff. Let us take water pool three, and let us say um, we could go back, but you know, really and truly, I don't really want to go back. I, I mean, I could go forward. I can just proceed and see what we can get out here. Okay. Wheel recognition not possible. The control unit cannot learn the vehicle's uh, wheel speed. Electronic wheel modules within driving time of six minutes or so. But one thing I had diverted from earlier on is this text document in which we were showing something on Microsoft Word. We were explaining earlier on about the color codes. Whenever you see them in abbreviation like RS, it's a simple mean pink. And GE, it just simply means GE mean yellow. And then we understand that R TR mean transparent, and then SW mean black in German, and GR is the abbreviation for gray wire, and BR abbreviation for brown, and then we can see here, in a WS is for white, and then RT is rot in German, which means red, and then GN is abbreviated for green wire, BL abbreviated for blue, VI is basically um, for violet, and orange is OR, you know what I mean, and so on, and like I said, remember this, it's an example of VI violet. Look here now. You'll see the same thing in the wire diagram that I've um, that we have um go through uh, briefly. Let us maximize it again. We have firstly see a VI somewhere. I just don't remember where I saw it. You know, but I know I see a VI somewhere. I don't remember. All right, nevertheless, that is not anything important. But let's go back and try to go forward. Let's continue the test model, okay? Over here on the left now, it said possible causes of faults would be, you know, um, RDC transmitter faulty C fault code entry for a transmission channel. And it says here, uh, you know, after the reset, over five wheels are received. It is thus not possible to differentiate between road wheel and spear wheel requirement he said the requirement would be the vehicle speed is less than 20 kmh reception aerial is faulty he said in the wheels there are a no wheel electronics in and b incorrect wheel electronics and third party components old generation and so on and then c would be less than four wheels electronics and so on and then it says source of interference at the vehicle influences the radio transmission, for example, used coal in the alternator and so on. So they are showing you several possible causes of faults of which can affect the input, you know, to you know to the computer, to the RDC about the condition of the tire pressure and so on. Oh sorry, not tire pressure, the wheel speed um, rotation. Because you know the DSC uses it, the EJS uses it. The, you know, like I said, the, D, the DSC is the anti-locking brake. It uses the wheel speed to know the car. The speed, I mean, the DME uses it. A whole lot of stuff uses these things. And uh, whenever these inputs are not coming into the different control units, and they, they will send those, the, the right can bus message at the right and won't be sent to those receiving control units. And those receiving control units over time will probably generate fault codes on their own. So over time, it forces you to fix the issue. So whenever you get a problem like this, people, you know, replace the transmitter, you know, and then if the uh, you know if the sensors are not really working right you know after you do your you know your test and so on you know you just buy a new one from the dealership and replace them and most often than not to fix most of the problems on these Rolls Royce and Minis and BMW it's just just throw new parts at it and then program and code the control unit and then the problem is okay okay and in so doing now we can close out of this tutorial so far let us close out of this and um, click yes. Let us go back to the full screen. Okay, I want to show you what other thing, programming plan. If we click programming plan here, you know, since this is the D that is set up on this laptop, I set it up in a way where is the D can basically, you know, read out the F chassis series, BMW and Rolls Royce and, and the lately released minis as where the, the SDP, SWI data is, is, is put in a particular PSDZ folder in the Rheingold folder of ISTD so that when we put it there and so on and ISTD is activated we can actually now see that it can now run a measures plan on the different control units that the software dictated would want to be uh, upgraded you see the present eye level on the car is basically you know the, the first number here in the eye level group right here where you see the cursor moving right here it tells you about the integration level the actual from when it was last say programmed you know, this car released from, say, 2010.
But over time, the car will go through services and so on. And then somebody may put a system on it to program over the control units and update them. So the last person that puts their system on it, they put it in somewhere in 2016. And it created the eye level, the 16 here in number show for 2016. And then 07 would be July. And then the software version for this update of the eye level will be 506. So the eye level actual is the last time the car was treated. And then now the eye level target that is in this software on this laptop, the latest eye level that is in this Easter D software version, you know, it will be uh, in March of 2017. And then its software version number will be 502 and so on. So if I say update the car right now by clicking on execute measures plan here at the bottom uh, right, which I'm not going to click on that for now because the car is running perfect and there's no problem with it. You know, when the car is finished updating, it's going to put the new eye level from 2016 to 2017 of 03, which is month of March, and then the software version number would be 502, okay, and so on. You see the problem here? Whenever other persons have problems, you know, with software interacting with the car and they cannot do any programming and coding, it may mean that the software high levels in the, in the files, you know, needed to be upgraded and so on and so forth, you know? So let me show you something, everyone. Let us show you where the files are stored for the high level mapping. So we go on C drive, we go in data, we go in BMW here, and we go in data again, we go in trick folder, we go in Insta P, and then we go in BMW services, and then we go services here, and it is uh, go in data, and this is it right here, eye level mapping. If you want to know the current eye level of the Insta D or Insta P you're using, you just click, well, I use, you know, the editor in Notepad++ plus plus because I like the outlay of this program and so on and so forth and give you details and also have the side numbers at the left to show you um, each line that are identified by different numbers. So if you can see, you know, you can tell you that this, the CIP is a simple meaning, you know, coding, individualization and programming. This was what they call a triple S fragment back in the day. In CD1 release, it was released in 2003 um, for cars that will be updated in that year for the month of October. And so on. So what we do now, we scroll down all the way to the bottom, and we can see that the Insta P version increased. You see, as it increased, it shows you the current version that we have on the laptop, which is this one right here, three Insta P, roughly Insta P three six, Insta P three point six one zero, and so on. That's the latest one that is on this laptop now, and so on. But there are, uh, you know, later updates out there, like three six to one point four are out there, and so on and so forth. You know. So let us scroll down to the end here, and we can see what the latest eye level is for the Rolls Royce. Okay, the Rolls Royce, it, it falls under the chassis group of F01, you know? And as we can see, the latest eye level for this Rolls Royce, you know, is 2017, March 03, and then the software version number 502, and so on, you know? And as you can scroll up, you can see that the list goes on where, you know, even the new X5, they release it and call it F01 as well because at first it was called E70 and so on. As you can see how they do it, you know? And um, as you can see how they do it and already in it, okay? You can see where they first introduced the F01. You can tell which year by looking at the eye level. You see, the F01 probably was released in 2008, as you can see right here, you know? Right to the right here, we see the little cursor moving 08 in September, you know? that, you know, this treatment of this, you know, F01 was treated and this is the last, um, the eye level from when the car F01 was introduced and so on. So, you know, with the eye level, when it was first introduced, you can tell from what here, when those chassis group of those cars are serious type BMWs were released or so on, or even Rolls Royce, you know. But let us say we finish talk about this. Let us minimize that. Let us go back to, um, let us show you guys something here. If you want to know the eye level for each chassis cars, what we do, we just click on any chassis group. It, the E89 covers E90, E91, E92, and so on. What we do, we go in KMH data, and we go down to a text file that is called ZK text, and then we use Notepad++ to open it up. You also can use Notepad and, you know, normal editor to open it up and so on. So what we do now, we scroll all the way down to the bottom, and we find out what the latest eye level is for this E90, E89 chassis group car. Is It goes in a, say, it goes for a... 2016 in November is the latest eye level for this Easter P version. I remember I told you my Easter P version is 3.61.0. So the latest eye level in this version for the E89 chassis group, which incorporates E90, E92, and 92, and 93, you know, is 2016. 
in November, the latest eye level goes for us. So that is the way, guys, you can find out the different eye levels of a car and so on, okay? And so on and so forth. And uh, let us go back and see. You see this PSDZ data folder? We copy this data and we put it right here in Ryan Gold. We put it right here. Ryan Gold is in Program X86 folder right here. And this is the PSS, PSDZ data. PSDZ simply means programming, zoom, zoom, hook, Zugfunkt, which means in German, programming system for the future. So this is the data, data underscore SWI, okay? So this is where the PSDZ data is stored, which make it possible for us to do this kind of a programming in Easter D, okay, people? So I hope you all learned something today, and so on. And as you can hear, that little, that little blower sound, there's the, uh, the boss is kind of... Um, blowing around some trash from out there in front of the garage and so on so okay people we are not gonna stay much longer on this we're not gonna do any execution here so what we're gonna do we are going to um we're going to go to final report ask if anything is there nothing is there final report only comes after you execute the measures plan and it's fully implemented successfully and I come up with with, 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 with with whatever you know okay all right we go back on vehicle information and then we um you know, as we can see, the control unit tree it shrinks because I kind of, you know, I kind of decrease, uh, I kind of decrease the DPI setting for the text to 100%. It was previously 125, and so on. So let me show guys again. I don't know if I did show anyone before. Oh, you increase the DPI setting. Let us minimize the program here. I do not remember if I show anyone it. Oh, I did it. But let me show anyone. Let me show somebody it is in the last final analysis. Okay, the re the rendering of the software program is finished. Let me minimize this. To increase the DPI settings on a laptop, people, what you got to do is just click on display settings here. You know, just in case when you run Easter D and Easter P, you see that the border edges are, 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 are hidden in the corner of the laptop. So what you got to do, you just need to increase the DPI setting to 100 or something. So what I do now, I just go in advanced sizing of text and other stuff. And what I do now, I click on use these. Um, all right. Now what I do, I click on set a custom scaling level. What I already did it. You know, on the first video, you know, when I have to, you know, implement it to, for it to take effect, it forces me to sign out. And I never really remember that I should stop the video and save it. So I kind of, you know, Camtasia Studio really, you know, allow you to recover by the last video that you lost, you know, and then we can be able to render that video. So that is where I changed it from 125 in that video to 100. I know it's now 100. And that is what you do first. You come right here, you change the DPI settings to, you know, from whatever the number is, if it's like, say, 125, 150. It will make the characters on the screen be big. And when you run Easter D and Easter P, guess what? It's going to make the border edges that have the buttons to the bottom black out and you can't see it and so on. So what you got to do to let the screen come into focus eh, of the software, put it to 100 and then click OK and you're good to go. But since I never do anything, I have to back out of it. I did it before and so on. And then the best recommended setting for the resolution is 1920 times 1080 and so on. And that is how I like to have my screen, you know? So on. And this is one of the Rolls Royce there on the desktop, which we are actually servicing here. This one is already taken care of, and you know, and so on and so forth. Um, let us see you now what else to be taught. Uh, let us go back in this um, document. Let us see what the document is teaching us here, and so on. It shows you here, people, that whenever you see anything on the wire diagram, pinouts that have to do with I, it is referring to input signal, and A have to do with output signals. Okay, and um, as I can show you here, um, let me see if I can go back and run a test plan here. Uh, yeah, vehicle management, let me go back here, okay. Let us go back and do a test plan here. And um, let us go back and do a test plan here. Let us click on one of these ABLs. Let's click on ABL just to highlight the black, the display button in black. Let us go back here, I want to show a person some stuff with the pinouts and so on. I like to give tutorials to, to edify the people, you know. Okay, let us go forward. Okay, good. Okay, um, let us continue. And the pinouts should come up in the next. Well, I do not know where it's at, but okay. I know the reason why it didn't come up because it probably turned on. I didn't turn it on in filters, but I did. But it should keep it. It should keep it, you know. I have to close out this test plan. 
and I have to go back to where the troubleshooting codes are at, you know? And I go to filters here. You see, they turn up on their own whenever you go back to do it again. And that's what I don't understand with these people. What I do, I just click all and just call it a day and done. I just basically turn on special tools standing towards. And here's my pin assignments there. And so when I click accept to save it, and then I go back and click display to run the test plan again. And then it will incorporate um, the features in the procedure, okay? That I enabled, okay? So if um, it show forth the wire diagram here, okay? Description details and then it tells you the kilometer noise but that's not my point i'm trying to go forward continue to see if it gives me the uh pinout for the circuit because i want to show somebody something here um, where the where the summer winter wheels change on the vehicle yes let me go forward here Okay, our metal valves and electronic wheel models in accordance with the BMW EPC installing wheels. Okay, let's start with yes. Electronic wheel models are installed only with metal valves. Okay, let's just go forward. Still doesn't come up with any pinout and so on. It said replace the it said replace the following company, the RDC area, which is a wireless transmitter. And so on. So okay, in this test one, let's send the test module. Let's just end the test model. And, um, so the following operations are to be carried out after completely working through the test plan for the tire pressure control. Clear diagnostic fault entries from fault memory. Perform a reset of the RDC control unit. Carry out test drive for longer than six minutes. Okay. Yeah. So let us close out this test plan. And um, what I wanted to do, you know, but I have to really find another you know, for code and uh, wheel speed detection. Let us go here and uh, check on that one here and see if we can find pinouts for the entire control module of the RDC, you know. And hopefully it can bring up what I wanted. I wanted pinouts to be a part of the wire diagram and a functional description, you know. So, okay, it comes up with the same thing. So let us go forward to see. Um, you know, it doesn't really come up. Okay, yes, it can. I'll have to do click on a wiring diagram and click on it, and then it will, it will come up. I didn't remember. Plus, I've been doing this for years, and I can't remember what it's <laughs> So what I got to do now, if I wanted to find a tire pressure control, I click on A, whatever that is, A66, and it will bring it up. It will bring up another window with the pinouts and so on, and there goes the pinout. This is the screen I wanted on the left. So as you can see, guys, this is what I wanted to find to show you guys all the, all the type. The type legends are here to show you that, you know, on pin 2 is E slash A. Simply meaning that on this wire, it's a, it's a, it's a body control area network bus signal, which is basically a bus connection. So it, it do both transmitting, which is, you know, TXD and receiving RXD on the same wire okay so any wire you see with e slash a you know e like i showed you here on the the word document where i print out you see see e simply mean bus signal it basically receive inputs and it also the same wire deliver outputs and so on and so forth and then you know i would be input signal and then a output signal and so on so let us go back so the uh, interface and look and so on. All right, M right here on pin 16 will be ground right there and so on and so forth. You know, so I just want other people to learn how to use these uh, BMW wire diagrams and so on. And so on and so forth, you know. As we can see here on pin, um, pin 27, supply here, it is showing that A is an output. It goes to the RDC area as a voltage supply to the RDC area and so on. And, you know, as you can see here, is the tire pressure control module, the tire pressure control module, the RDC, um, it sends an output of a red wire from it all the way to the RDC area and so on. So when you see A here, meaning the output is coming from the tire pressure monitoring uh, control module, you know, and so on. So if we want to know if there's any other wire that coming from that control module to the RDC area, which is a wireless transmitter, what we do you now, we just look for the same thing here, RDC aerial, like what we found here. 
Yeah, you see, ground. So the ground also coming from, it's a uh, ground is basically coming, um, it's an input. E mean, you know, basically an, uh, an input. It's a ground that goes out to the RDC area. Okay? And in so doing now, that is how you understand really how the, uh, the, the plus wires and the ground wires are arranged. E mean input and A mean output and so on. So there is a ground that comes from the RDC area into pin 12 here and so on. Um, let us move forward. Let us go, uh, let us come out of this one and then let us uh, full screen. Uh, we're gonna go forward. Okay, let me click on the wire diagram. I, I do wanna explain something more to individuals. Um, well, on this wire diagram, there's not anything much here, you know? And uh, you can find the different control units. And let's say, for instance, you wanna find A7A, electronic wheel module front right. We just simply click on this hyperlink, and then it brings up on the right side a picture of it installation location, which will be EBO in the legend, and there is a transmitter, and that is what it looks like there. And, um, you know, that is what the transmitter looks like there. So if we click in this area, we can increase the size of the wire diagram. We can say that, uh, as you said, the, the issue is that it's called the wheel electronics front right. So this is what basically, uh, you know, measures out, you know, receive the pressure from and then perhaps transmit that signal to the RDC module in a wireless way, you know? So, you know, real electronic system front right. So we, we when we're repairing the car, what we do here, we have to read the component description of it because in the component description, it tells you about the control module that plays the role on the bus system and, you know, what you should expect in terms of measure. You know, as you can see here, it tells you the RDC transmitter it has a low frequency transmission path of 125,000 hertz and respond to requests from the RDC control unit. And the, it, it comes up in the form of a, a cyclical signals with a priority of 54 seconds. So this is what the component description really help us to do to solve the car. These are what we read before we begin to do anything on the car by running is the D, make a calculated test plan according to the fault codes then we go forward in the procedure and the procedure eventually pull up the installation location and the component description or the functional description and then we understand now um, how to go about reading up how the system is designed to work and then we can go you now with time and patience and understanding when you read read with comprehension then you go forth in solving the you know the mysteries of a car you know the mystery of the car is problem so we have to learn how to do these things and so on well, me for one, I never really go to any BMW school to learn anything. Me for one, I was a mechanic in Jamaica. So what I do, I come up here with my skill and I still maintain it, you know. And I basically, um, you know, was given calls for um, BMW vehicles back in 2009. And I never have any advanced diagnosis equipment to read out the BMW advanced codes that are only pulled by advanced dealership interfaces. So what I do now, I just basically start to invest money in getting the BMW diagnostic cable and also the software. So that is how um, I get into the BMW business. I never really go to school for this measure, you know. This measure is basically picked up by me because other people call me about BMWs and I only have generic scanners at the time that can only pull those generic codes and so on. So therefore, um, I only... I, I am basically self-taught, and self-taught simply meaning that you read other people's material on BMW forums, which I join a lot of BMW forums, and I read of stuff I don't know. That's how I'm edifying myself, and stuff I figure out on my own. You see, nobody never really teach me how to use a multimeter before, you know, but if you never taught, you know, at a school how to use a multimeter, you can use Google as your friendly assistant to show you how, and then YouTube, many men on YouTube teach you how to use stuff. So you learn it over the years and you get, you learn how to measure continuity check, and you learn how to also to do amperage. Um, you know, you learn how to measure ampere draw, and you also learn to do voltage difference test, and you also learn how to do resistance test and so on and so on and so forth. 
And that is how I become proficient in, say, working on BMW car, Rolls Royce, and Mini. And whenever I have the dealership software, it become much more easier with me and my multimeter. And now I needed to get my oscilloscope. You know, they're kind of expensive. And I want a good one at work. So I hear that snap on some good ones. So what I'm going to do is to plan my way to get one of them when I have at least a free $1,500 I want to buy it and so on. That is how I become self-proficient in BMW Mini and Rolls Royce. And many people on YouTube, they see my channels. And they, you know, they have problems. They call my number and they give me a call and I help them solve the problems. And whenever they're ready, they want me to set up a software for them and give them latest high-level updates. I give it to them for a price. And then, you know, you know, they take care of me. I take care of them. And for those persons who, you know, spend money with me, I provide technical support for my clients and so on. My client base is growing as the years go by. So the more people I get, more money, more comfortable life is and so on. And my wife, if I have a wife, I don't have one yet. I mean, searching for one, basically put, can be happy with me. Making a ton of money. You know, ladies love money. Okay, this is a search string of what we're going to do. We can search in the structures. We can search in document title. We can do search in document. Or we can search for document number. So let's say, for instance, right? We're going to look up RDC. We just type in RDC. And then we just basically put and hit the enter key. And it's going to query all of the um, the areas of the software in the SQLite database for RDC because it already have the abbreviation for the you know the tire pressure uh, in RDC is a, is a, is, a, is, a, is a wheel speed uh, the wheel speed sensor in the tire pressure control and so on. So basically, put um, see so many hits. But this is one way, guys, you guys can use a software to get access to a variety, a variety of information, you know, service information or other form of information that are hidden all over inside the program in the SQLite database that are of the, the, the repair manuals that is inside embedded in Easter Dates, fully loaded. They make it fully loaded so you guys don't have a problem to program and code a car and the procedure that you ought to follow to successfully, you know, follow every step to solve or rectify the problems on the BMWs, the Rolls Royce, and the Mini, and so on. So this is what it is today. Okay, batteries running out, ten percent. Okay, I have to close this video now, guys. So somebody learned something today. I'm gonna close out this video because my laptop here is running out, ten percent battery. So I have to close out this this one, and so on. So, goodbye, guys. Have a nice day. See you until, you know, you hear from me next time. If anybody want BMW software to install on them laptop, just give me a call at 786-355-3660. And, you know, you can give me an email at diagnosebeamer12 at gmail.com. And so on. I'll set up your system for you. Your garage, I set it up for you for $300. Your individual, I set it up for you for $300. Also, and so on. The price goes across the board for every person, private or business. No, and then I'll set you up and then you'll be good to go. You buy your ICOM A2 clone or you buy your ICOM next, whatever you want to buy. So okay, so let us minimize this to this screen here. And then let us minimize it. And let us close some software here. And um Okay, eight percent. Let us minimize. Let us close my my um my camera studio recording. Goodbye, YouTubers. Bye bye.